Well, 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 the plot thickens. Did you hear the latest sleaze about Nikki Haley? My estrogen-soaked veins live for this type of salacious scandal. Apparently, Little Miss, I'm the perfect wife and mother, has been accused of having an affair. Two of them. In fact, this isn't just gossip. It appears to have substantial evidence. Both men claim to have had a sexual relationship with Haley while she was a South Carolina lawmaker, this being prior to her becoming governor of that state. These allegations come from signed affidavits by both men in 2010. The details are just far too juicy to skip over, so let's indulge in this for a moment. Keep in mind, these alleged affairs happened when Haley was in her mid-30s. Meet Will Folks, a 30-something communications consultant for Haley. He enjoys making out in the car and banging the night away with a married woman. Seriously, that actually sounds a lot classier than what really happened. He claims in his affidavit that he first kissed Haley in a car after the pair spent the evening drinking with friends. Haley then drove the couple to a parking lot behind a neighborhood center at a park. He then says, and I quote, We slid back the seats of her Cadillac SUV so that Representative Haley could climb on top of me. Folks says the couple got together frequently, doing the deed in an apartment, in her car, and at her state senate office. He claims at least one other person was aware of the relationship. Haley told folks that when his relationship with his girlfriend, now wife, got serious, that he should let her know so she could back off. When he did tell her it was serious, she told him his girlfriend was cheating on him. After finally backing off, folks claims Haley said she wanted to confide in someone about their affair because she was hurt and had no one to talk to. This woman was the director of the South Carolina Department of Insurance. Now, the affair lasted less than six months, but she maintained late-night phone calls with him until 2009, one of those being intercepted by his girlfriend-turned-current wife, who instructed Haley to keep it business only. Folk says a forensic examination of Haley's state-issued laptop and desktop computer would show emails that would prove his allegations are true. Meet stud number two, Larry Marchant. Nearly a decade her senior... Marchan is a lobbyist who enjoys sex with random people and ruining marriages. He met Haley at a conference in the summer of 2008. After a night of dinner and drinks with other attendees, they went back to her hotel room and had sex. His wife even cited this affair with Haley in court documents during their divorce. All this hoeing around was fairly obvious. It was, seems to be, South Carolina's worst kept secret. GOP insiders have told the media that Haley was seen fraternizing with the men. From being spotted hopping in the backseat of her car and literally steaming up the windows with folks, to drinking late into the night in her office with Marchant. One staffer says that Haley was having a lot of marriage problems at the time and on the verge of divorce when the affairs occurred. Another campaign staffer says he had no doubt about what she was doing with folks and Marchant. This person said Haley and Will's affair was, quote, totally out in the open. Everyone in South Carolina politics knew about it. A fourth source says that folks confessed to him about having sex with Haley in a parking lot. Again, this is all very classy stuff. Back when these allegations were brought up in 2010 and now, Haley has denied that any of this is true and maintains that she has been 100% faithful to her husband. However... My female intuition says otherwise. After reading about all these salacious details, I have about as much confidence that Haley was faithful as I did that Asa Hutchinson would win the Republican nomination for president. If you've spent any time in the political sphere, especially the GOP, you quickly realize that everything revolves around sex. Women use sex to get power, and men use their power to get sex. It's an unfair trade, but nevertheless, it exists. So what does this leave for the American taxpayer? Well, we get a bunch of horny bastards that succeed in this environment. Their lying, cheating ways are the grease that fuels their career. Deplorable people slide into power and stay there. Decent people see this immature, reprobate behavior and peace out. It's not worth the hassle or the deletion of your conscience. 
to start acting like this. As I like to say, if you got to sleep with someone to have a career, why do you then want to go work 40 plus hours a week on top of that? If I had no morals, I'd skip the low pay of politics and be a professional sugar baby, a porn star, an e-girl, an OnlyFans slut. At least they do the deed and then move on with their life. Imagine shagging some weird Democrat or Republican politician and then still having to do your 9 to 5 BS with them lurking around the corner. Now, nah, I'll screw someone for a couple hours a week, get the cash, and enjoy all my time off. Like usual, politicians are prime examples of wasting everyone's time and money. And just think, everyone acted all offended when Trump said, grab him by the pussy. In light of politicians' behind-the-scenes behavior, that seems very tame. Before someone gets their big old panties in a knot, it's not only Nikki Haley. But no one has the time to go through all politicians' affairs. She's just the one who's at the top of mind right now because she is running for president after all. Now, let's take a side trip here and look at Haley's career. She left her job as ambassador in the Trump administration with more than a half million dollars in debt. This included more than $25,000 in credit card debt and a line of credit and a mortgage of more than $250,000 each. She went from massive debt when she resigned in 2018 to a net worth of $8 million today. How did she do it? She leaped out of this straight into the arms of Boeing and then hit that speaker circuit. It seems like she allegedly slept her way through South Carolina politics, leapfrogged into the national scene, and then cut and ran for the big dollars. Good for her. Who would turn down big money? I don't think I would. But I do call into question how she got it. Was she pulling her usual tricks back from her early lawmaker days and riding every she came in contact with? I mean, with that much debt on the line and a lucrative Boeing salary hanging in the balance, who knows? That sure would bear more fruit and be more motivating than when she was allegedly sleeping around as a state legislator so she could climb another rung on the ladder. And what about those speeches and book deals? Did she shag her publisher to get it? Did she have another one-night stand after her speech like she did with Marchant back at that conference? It seems to me that Haley is a woman who will screw anything to get ahead and whose eye is not on public service, but getting rich. And again, we all want to be rich. Just be honest about it. Trump is money hungry, but at least he admits it. And if you had a bunch of affairs, just say you did. It's the alleged lying and covering up that's so bad to me. It's cowardly. It shows you have a double standard. You're a hypocrite. Worse than that, you were screwing colleagues. No one believes that a woman who bangs people she works with isn't using it to get ahead. Anybody that's had an office job or worked anywhere for any amount of time will always know who's screwing who and see how it benefits them. Kamala Harris and Willie Brown, anyone? I do wonder, being the war hawk neocon that she is, will this be how she solves international issues? Will she bring peace to the Middle East by shagging both Hamas terrorist and Benjamin Netanyahu? Or will she convince young people to raise the retirement age to 70 by banging them all along the campaign trail? I guess we'll never know because she'll never be president. Thanks for listening to Broad Thinking. Be sure to tune in to an all new episode next Monday night. In the meantime, be sure to follow the Ladies Love Politics channel on TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, True Social, Broadian Social, BitChute, and Rumble.